the soda route in Manhattan. So Chelsea was my area. If anybody's unaware of Chelsea... Well, what, what do you mean? Chelsea... Wait, Chelsea Clinton was your area? No, 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 no. Chelsea, New York. I'm joking. Okay, it was a bad joke. Go ahead. I'm in 20th Street. Now, I'm in bumper-to-bumper traffic in my truck with my helper, and I see a guy to the left of me in the middle of the street where the cars are, where the bumper-to-bumper traffic is. He has his pants down, and he's taking a dump, and half of it's hanging out of his record. Wait, wait, no, please, let's not get too graphic. Come on, that's disgusting. But, but it, it, when did this occur? How long ago? Truth. This was years ago, when, before Giuliani cleaned up the mess, okay? Oh, this was pre-Giuliani they were defecating in the street. Yeah. So it was under the liberal Dinkins that he was doing this. And I'll give you one better. All right, so now, now we're back to the Dinkins time with, with de Blasio in New York. Yeah. There, there's no rules anymore. The only rules are uh, don't be uh, racist or homophobic. Other than that, you can do anything you want. One other thing, Mike. Yeah, but please, Pete, no, no graphic. Please don't talk like that about it. First of all, it's not right. It's not necessary. What did you have, a seltzer route or what? A soda route or a seltzer route? I had a can of dry route. I used to own it. And Do they still sell seltzer in New York, by the way, in bottles? Uh, you no, know, they no. You're talking old fashioned the squirting seltzer bottle. Yeah, yeah, like Clarabelle the clown that just squirted on the table. A friend used to have one of those routes, and it was very bad. He used to go up to Harlem. And he, well, I'll tell you why. Those seltzer bottles, to me, they look like grenades ready to explode on the kitchen table. I always, always feared them. Even <laughs> when they were empty, when my mother would put them under the sink to give them back for recycling to be recharged, we were warned not to go near the seltzer bottles. They were like a, a danger item. But the fact is, is I thought about where liberalism, how it metastasized in Brooklyn and Queens and uh, the Bronx. I think it has to do with the high carbon dioxide content of seltzer and how it got the little bubbles got into the brain the brains of so many people, and I think it actually was toxic. I think carbon dioxide is toxic, and it explains where liberalism came from in New York. But that's neither here nor there. It's not a scientific theory. It's purely a pet theory of mine. So, Pete, any other homeless horror stories that are realistic? I was, I was unloading my truck, and I heard, heard screaming, okay? There were a gang of homeless guys mugging. The people were down on the ground. There were two 80-year-olds. Nobody helped them. They were all scared. The people brought daylight. I ran with a pipe. I don't know how many blocks, five blocks in between traffic, swinging the pipe at the guy's head. We, we, my helper grabbed one guy by the neck. He got clocked in the side of the head. Okay? The money was blowing in the street. We saved these people. Nobody was there to help them. Okay? Well, thank God for, hero thank God for heroic soda man. Well, you know, somebody... You see, if we lived in a sane society, Dinkins would have given you a key to the city for saving the 80-year-olds from the homeless mobs. No, that... All right, I'm, I got such a wonderful audience. It's funny, when you get off the Democrat-Republican broken record of talk radio, and you get off it and you start to actually touch human interest stories, I get such rich calls. I feel like I'm living in Elizabethan England, and I I'm, I'm feel like this whole show is like an Elizabethan English show about what's really going on in the streets. It's that simple. If you want me to keep talking about the bums thing with a real good story, 855-407-282, I'm going to go to the news story, such as the one I just read you. Uh, senior Hamas official treated at private Israeli hospital. It just shows you that people mean to do good, they want to do good, and they think that the person is going to respond in like kind. But they don't. You don't understand that kindness is often not rewarded. Very often... Kindness will be taken as weakness. Do you think Hamas will stop trying to kill Israelis because the Israelis gave one of the chief terror leaders spinal surgery? Do you think he's going to suddenly shake hands with an Israeli doctor and say, God bless you, let's have peace? You know it's not going to happen. Do you think that any more care and compassion for the bums in the streets is going to make them stop misbehaving or be, stop being so aggressive? You know it's not going to work. At a certain point, only discipline will work, whether it be with an unruly child, an unruly nation, or unruly homeless people. I'll be back. One man's opinion. Be here or be nowhere. Join the Savage Nation. Call now. 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. Savage. Your Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust for tangible assets, gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. 
It is the Savage Nation. There's so many things I want to say to you all at once. Hour one was a plane crash. I had technical difficulties in one of my home studios. Heart pounding. Uh, neck exploding. Nothing could be done to fix it. I ran up to another studio I have, and now everything's... Wor it's like in w I had one plane crash, got out of the plane, shook myself off, came up the hill. Everything's perfect. We're flying at 45,000 feet. We're flying at uh, 450 miles an hour. The air is calm. The clouds are beautiful. Everything is beautiful right now. I love radio when things work. I could do radio until I'm 120 if I had a smooth, easy situation. So uh, a friend of mine sends me an email during the show, and he says, wow, I loved your show. It's typically brilliant. It's your thing on bumology. I can't believe how good this is. He says to me, absolutely fantastic show. I'm howling. Bumology 101. How do you do it, he says to me. I said, did you hear our one? It was a plane crash. And he says to me, no. He said, I was in an airplane. I landed to your current brilliance. He said, spectacular. Keep it up. So I said, hour one was a disaster, had to run from Bay to Hill. And then at the same time, I am emailing during breaks to my one of my publishers at St. Martin's Press, who published all of the Hatfield novels. Many of you love those novels. And the last one was called Countdown to Mecca. And I'll tell you what happened to me in a Barnes & Noble the other day. Uh, and the nice feminist who runs the store. I had my assistant ask for Countdown to Mecca. One nice young girl says it's on aisle. Blah, blah, blah. Go to look on the end. It wasn't there. So we go to the counter. Out comes the mean feminist. And she says, well, we had it over here, and it was under the counter. So I said, why do you have it under the counter instead of out on the rack? And he turned into an ugly argument. I told Barnes & Noble about it. It's amazing the kind of people that are in the book business. So I said to my publisher at St. Martin's Press, I said, how many copies did it sell? So he said it sold very, very well. And he gives me the number, which I'm not going to read on the air. It's not important. It sold very well. And he says um, sales on the print edition were really very, very good. And he says, they're nice numbers all the way around. So I said to him, is this good for a novel? Because they're lower than it would be for a nonfiction book. And he says, yes, it is very good. He said, it's all relative. A lot depends on expectations and how much of an advance was paid. But he said, just talking in general, I'd say most novelists would be thrilled to sell that many books. Absolutely. So I, I got to read to you what I wrote to him because you'll find it interesting. This is what I do during the, the show breaks and I have the time to, uh, to I can't, I lost it already. Here it is. This is what I said to him. I drive myself too hard, I guess. I can only imagine what I would have done for such success when I was a struggling young writer in the 60s, 70s, and even the 80s. And then he sent me an email. I find it very interesting, by the way, to work during breaks because otherwise all you're doing is reading about Democrats and Republicans. And here's what he wrote. Well, last one for those of you interested in writing. Major editor, major company says, but I bet that your drive is a big part of why you are so successful. In publishing, especially today with fewer and fewer places that review books, authors with a real platform who can drive sales are at a premium. Now you understand why we in talk radio are at a premium uh, in the world of books. There is nowhere else to go anymore. Because I grew up on writers such as Hemingway, and I don't even know how many he sold. But, you know, in those days, if a man wrote a novel that was moderately successful, it usually became a movie. And I thought that by now abuse of power would have been made for a great wonderful the reason it's not a movie is because the the um, the maniacs in hollywood make the selections they don't want any movie that shows Allah akbar uh, at the ending to the to the movie see my character jack hatfield saves san francisco from a terrible terrorist attack and he chases the the uh, would-be terrorist who he just stopped to the top of the golden gate bridge after a wonderful chase on camino de real which i've driven a hundred times and as he throws him off the top of the bridge, he says, the last line in Abuse of Power is, enjoy the virgins, A.H. That's a good movie. But of course, Katzenberg, Katzenberg, Matzenberg, Ratzenberg wouldn't produce such a movie. Any movie that would put down America, put down God, put down the family, put down the Boy Scouts, put down the Girl Scouts, put down the Eagle Scouts, put down the Eagles. Now that's fair. Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised.
And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. Hey, let's just go to the latrine of America. Welcome to The Savage Nation. Here's a terrible story. In the anti-cop San Francisco newspaper, here is the headline this afternoon, Oakland cop shoots suspect dead after being attacked with chain by Henry K. Lee, who, of course, rarely, if ever, reports a perp if uh, the perp is not a white man. And Evan Cernofsky, another uh, fellow traveler of the left, headline, Oakland cop shoots suspect dead. So right away, the uh, Black Lives Matter crowd uh, moves into gear without talking about what the, the darling did to the cop. I'll read you the story. A police officer shot and killed a suspect, some suspect, after he smashed her in the head with a metal chain Thursday morning in Oakland's Adams Point neighborhood. Officials and witnesses said, the officer was called to investigate an assault when she, the officer, contacted the suspect, a man in his 20s. He attacked her, said Officer Joanna Watson, an Oakland police spokeswoman. The female officer then fired several shots at the man, hitting him at least once, Watson said. Another witness reported seeing the suspect go after the officer with a chain before he was shot. Watson can only say the officer was attacked with a metal object. You hear what they're constrained now in, in the city because of the vermin on the left in the legal profession? The officer was not identified, was taken to Highland Hospital in Oakland. A witness who did not want to be identified said he saw the officer bleeding heavily from her face. You hear this? She suffered serious head and face injuries that are none life-threatening. Of course, she'll be disfigured for life from the doll who hit her in the face with the bicycle chain. Wait, it gets even better. Acquaintance of the dead suspect who were at the scene but did not want to be identified said he suffered from an unspecified mental illness. Yeah, called hatred. You know, by the way, the killer in Virginia yesterday grew up in Oakland. Did you know that? He came from Oakland and he couldn't make it here, so he went to become a media figure in North Carolina. The rest is history. Just six minutes before the shooting, Oakland police have been issued a bulletin on the radio that a man in the same block had assaulted someone with a bike chain at 6.30 in the morning. A dispatcher warned officers that the suspect, quote, has been armed with a knife in the past. But given that it's Oakland, California, where the police have been attacked repeatedly by the vermin in the liberal establishment, they couldn't take the guy down preemptively. So they had to wait for him to attack someone else with a chain. Now, wait, it gets even better. An Oakland-based author, whose name I won't even re read because she's probably written nothing, was walking back to her car after working out at a gym when she heard gunshots. The author said she walked past the officer who was sitting on the curb crying and shaking while bleeding from the head and then spotted a man bleeding stomach down on the ground. He was bleeding from the mouth. He was switching a lot. Mucus and blood was coming out of his mouth. Wait, here it comes the punchline. The female author said she and other witnesses asked if they could help the man. Now, here's a cop bleeding from the head, but right away the liberal psychos want to help the man. And police told them to back up and move them to the sidewalk. Oh, my God, there's a lawsuit right there. So paramedics take the officer away in an ambulance, and police start CPR on the suspect. The author said she was deeply disturbed by what she witnessed. The injured female officer got on the police radio at 8.30 in the morning, sounding breathless, and said, I need a code 3 medical. I've been struck in the head by the suspect, MacArthur and Van Buren. She later added, the suspect needs an ambulance, too. I've still got him at gunpoint. Oh, there's a lawsuit for one of these rats with a law degree. I mean, they should have taken care of him first, after all. Uh, she was still alive. He didn't kill her. She had no right to shoot him. She should have consulted with him. She should have consulted with a mental health professional. She should have called in counselors as her face was torn open by this moron. Okay, should I read the rest of the story? Shall I read the rest of the story now? This is Now they go on to all the police shootings in Oakland. You hear this? And here come the Black Lives Matter crowd coming out uh, from, the, from, the, uh, from the background. How about Cops Lives Matter? Why don't we have a little rally in America called Cops Lives Matter? And by the way, this is tied into the homeless issue. There are so many violent homeless waiting to attack, which is under the surface. And that's why I'm dealing with this problem. It's not so much the defecation in the urine. I just don't go to the city anymore. I cannot stand it. It stinks. San Francisco, especially around the fer ferry terminal, smells like an open sewer. The Fisherman's Wharf smells like an open sewer. Maybe you want that with your crab cocktail. Maybe you want a little of fecal matter in your nostrils to go with your walkaway cocktail. Something has to be done about the bums in San Francisco who are out of control. Period. End of story.
KSMO Laura, what's your homeless horror story? Oh, yes. Hi, Michael. Um, first of all, it's a, a real privilege 